I am joined by Scott Pressler, a Republican activist and Get Out the Vote organizer who is traveling across the country to register people to vote for the Republican Party in wake of the 2020 election. And we are here in Fairfax County talking about your efforts, sitting down. You, you have a little bit of a pause right now with all your travel, so I appreciate you taking time to speak with me about your mission statement, what you're up to, uh, your goals, and, and all that. So why don't you introduce uh, viewers to you, what, what sure. Scott Pressler does. Well, my name is Scott Pressler. I'm a conservative activist who travels the country going into America's most dangerous and dirtiest cities, picking up trash in an act of love. And I also couple my cleanups with voter registration because if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. And so I'm trying to make America clean and green again. When did you first start doing this activism? Did it predate uh, the election of President Trump? Have you always been a Republican activist or was it him that really just inspired you to go out and uh, start these activities? Well, I have to give homage first to President Obama. You see, it was President Obama who inspired me, but to become a community organizer on the right side. I actually, I think I'm most known for my Twitter account, mm -hmm. and I created my Twitter account the day that President Obama was reelected in 2012. Not because I was really angry at the president, but I was angry at myself. Where was I registering voters? Where was I knocking on doors and soliciting donations and getting out the vote? And the answer is I was only a voter. I wasn't an active participant in our democratic republic. And so I said, okay, you're gonna get involved. I started volunteering for the Republican Party of Virginia in 2013. I fell in love with it. And the reason why I do have these marvelous Texas boots is because I moved down to Texas in 2014 and helped elect Governor Greg Abbott. And then I spent two years of my life working to defeat Hillary Clinton and the rest is history. Yeah, and recently you have picked up a lot of attention. It's not simply because you're trying to get attention for yourself, but for the greater cause. Sure. Why is it that people have picked up on your story? Is it, get out the vote is not a novel, <laughs> unordinary concept, but the way that you've done it, I think, has kind of largely drawn in people who are maybe disaffected or, or what, but, but how is your GOTV effort different than, let's say, the Republican parties? Well, there's definitely nothing sexy about voter registration. It's, you know, not the front page of any news article but I make it fun and I do it with positivity and I do it with love. What we see in today's uh, society and our culture is everything is drawn to negativity and it's dark and it's desperate. And I think people are drawn to this long haired millennial <laughs> that's sashing across the country in his boots and he's doing it with love and with kindness. And I think people are just attracted to that. They're attracted to the love. And you know, I'm not afraid. I have gone to West Baltimore where people are getting shot. I've been to 23rd Street in Chicago. I've been to San Francisco, California, Nancy Pelosi's backyard. See, I think what makes me different and what I want to bring to the Republican Party is simply I will go anywhere and I will talk to anyone because I believe in our values and principles and I believe in Donald Trump and most importantly, I believe in America's future and I want to secure America's future. And you do all these efforts on your own, Yes. That correct? Yes. The, the Republican Party doesn't help you in any way or do they? I do, do not work for Ronna McDaniel. I do not work for Trump Victory. I have no ties to the GOP. I'm doing this all as a private citizen and I'm very proud to say I've never once asked for a dime, wow. ever. So it's all self-funded, that's incredible. And have people voluntarily pitched in to support your efforts? They have, they have been generous to donate, okay. but I wanted people to know my heart is in this. I'm doing this for the right reason and I'm doing this because I love my country. I didn't want to just be another t-shirt merchant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smart, yeah, because I think too many people fall into that line of trying to make a quick buck selling merchandise and has no measurable impact. I think that's Absolutely. a criticism people sometimes have of our movement when they see that, but it seems like you're kind of oriented into being action oriented. Yes, stop talking, start doing. That is my motto, plain and simple. And you know, if I have this big following, what do all the likes, what do all the retweets, what do the followers actually mean if Donald Trump loses? It means nothing. It means that this was all a wash. I'm here to 
activate my over 720,000 followers and to get them out into the real world to register voters and knock on doors and make phone calls and ultimately to vote. I want to empower the people that follow me to take action. Very good, very good to hear. And you were telling me pre-filming that most of the people you register are first-time voters. They've never registered to vote. Yes. These are not people who simply just transfer uh, locations or residences. These are, you said, outright people who've never once yes. casted a ballot. Is that correct? I mean, <laughs> I've registered so many felons to vote. It's not even wow. funny. Uh, well, and you know, I try to do things differently. Well, I want people to understand, number one, this new Republican Party that I'm helping to represent is a movement based on love. And the best way that you show love is through action, not words. Number two, this new Republican Party is a no judgment movement. Who am I to judge uh, the actions of your past if you're living a, a new life today? And look at what President Trump has done with the First Step Act, giving people a second chance at life. If I believe in Donald Trump and I believe in this new Republican Party, that means that, you know what? We should be going into prisons and we should be registering people to vote and we should be giving them a second chance at life. And so I've been actually doing the research state by state, finding out if a felon is available to register to vote. I send them all the information or I meet with them personally. I just had a woman, I believe she said, Scott, I'm 56, I'm in Kentucky, I've never voted in my entire life and it's on my bucket list. So immediately I messaged her, here's the Secretary of State website, here's how you register to vote, plus one for Donald Trump and the state of Kentucky. And that's how easy it is to do online, but literally I'll meet with people too. I will drive to their home, I will drive to a coffee shop, I will drive to a movie theater, I don't care. I'm hungry for this and I will do whatever it takes legally in order to reelect Donald Trump. That's very ambitious. And you were mentioning and alluding to the cleanups you were doing. Yes. And for some reason, much of uh, the response to it was negative when it was just you volunteering to go out and help uh, an area of Western Baltimore, which everyone knows is very economically ravaged. It's been that way for many years. You don't have to be a Republican to acknowledge that the city has not benefited from those who currently hold power there. And you held this cleanup and people dismissed your efforts. Why do you think they dismissed your efforts? Definitely it was politicized. You know, Baltimore has been voting Democrat, we'll say for the last couple decades, right? It's been under Democratic leadership. And if you visit Baltimore and if you see the streets and you see the boarded up homes and you see the trash filled alleyways and you see the poverty, you know, it's it's time for a change. But I didn't go in with politics. You will never see me at a cleanup where I'm wearing political gear because my goal is, look, who am I to come in and pretend that I know everything? I'm just coming in. I want to offer a hand and I want to offer love and I want to earn people's trust and respect. And you don't do that by going in and pandering. And you don't do that by going in and immediately offering a political candidate. No, my goal is to earn their trust and respect. And we did that in Baltimore. Miss Louise, she's 81 years old. She's four foot 10 inches tall, which is hilarious because I'm six foot five. So her standing next to me is a quite a sight to see. And she told me after our second cleanup, I'm voting red next year, no more blue. And it's because I didn't push politics. And it's because I showed her I give a darn. This is about this, not just politics or an election. And uh, you know, the city of Baltimore, they denied us permits for dumpsters. I will never I forget that. that as long as I live, that we were denied permits for dumpsters. And I said in my mind, well, they can respectfully go fly a kite. I'm gonna go do this cleanup anyway. And we did, and it was the best decision of my entire life. And you said, and I think I saw this on social media, that much of the populace there actually responded quite positively oh, to these yeah. efforts. Yeah. Oh, my, oh my gosh, they were, I was just reviewing some material last night and this woman who's in the alleyway that we had just cleaned up, she goes, I'm not much of a crier, but this makes me want to cry. She goes, I'm just, I'm thankful, I'm grateful. The people don't want that to be their normal. Do, do they want to live like that? No and they keep electing the same people over and over that aren't keeping their promises to them. And that's why I'm coming in and saying, well, if you don't like it, then it's time for change. I'm not gonna tell you how to vote, but I'm gonna say, if you're doing the same thing over and over and it's not working, well, maybe it's time to go in a different direction.
Yeah, because I think the criticism we often hear about the Republican Party is they don't go to the cities to engage. And I think what you're doing is very interesting because you're not pushing an agenda. And I, I think a lot of us have had this conversation, uh, whether you're in journalism or activism or whatnot, just going in and con convening and communing with these people and, and communicating, excuse me, with these people, they can see that Republicans are not this hardened caricature. And, and is that what you've seen going yes. into these different cities, apart from the cleanups, even the yes. administration efforts? I'm a white man who has success with the black community because I do one thing, I show up. And people say to me, I'm a gay man. They say, Scott, how do Republicans win the gay vote? Show up. How do you win the Asian vote? Show up. How do you win the Hispanic vote? Show up. There's no magic key to getting somebody's vote other than showing that you care about them. And the way that I show I care is through my actions, not my words. It's that simple. Right. And in the midst of you registering first-time voters, people who've never voted, have you mm -hmm. encountered many Democrats who, let's say, have said, you know, maybe I'm tired of the party, I'm going to pull the lever for President Trump or Republicans? Have you encountered a little bit of that? I've encountered a lot of them. I mean, I just had this woman. I was in uh, Modesto, California, and she comes up <laughs> wearing an LGBT T-shirt, and it says, you know, um, liberty, guns, beer, Trump. So of course I'm mm -hmm. all over that. <laughs> and she goes, I'm a lesbian who has just taken the red pill in the last two months, wow. brand new. And part of it was her experience with the pandemic. And she's seen the way that the media has responded to it and the way that governors like Newsom have responded in shutting us down and shutting our businesses and taking away our freedoms. And here you have a woman who is supposed to vote Democratic because of her genitalia. And here you have a woman who's also a lesbian who's supposed to vote Democratic because of her sexuality. And she's defying all of that and standing for Donald Trump. And it's moment, and of course they said to her, are you registered to vote at your current address? I have to get that vote. <laughs> but it's moments like that, that tell me I'm going in the right direction. And because I'm doing it with positivity and because I'm doing it with love, uh, there's no better way to go. I was just at a restaurant in uh, Pennsylvania and a woman of color is our waitress and I'm wearing a Trump shirt. She hadn't seen it yet. But we were just talking to her and she said, you know, the governor, Governor Wolf, who's a Democrat, is making life for businesses so difficult. And she said it's killing businesses and that her business right there was struggling. And, uh, and I said, are you registered to vote at your current address? And she said, our voices will be heard this November. And that was as close as she could get to saying as she will be voting and I believe she'll be voting to the right. And here again, you have a woman of color, but she's a business owner and she's single-handedly, she's first-handedly suffering the effects of democratic leadership. And I think it's pushing people to the right. That's incredible. Yeah, I keep seeing, you know, we see reports and I try to keep track of the news as a freelance journalist. We always hear a lot of about Republican defections to Biden, but people don't report about the Democrat defections to Trump or Republicans. How come you think that isn't given fair, a fair shake? <laughs> Uh, one of the media, with all due respect, except for Town Hall, given us a fair shake. I mean, if I were a Democrat, I think I would have already had a hair care commercial and I'd be on the cover of Times Magazine. You know, with all due respect to the Swedish activist who's traveling the world, you know, telling people they need to uh, clean up their cities, I'm doing that. I'm literally an environmental steward that is taking action and not posting on Twitter. And you haven't seen the media cover any of the work that I'm doing because I'm going into democratic controlled cities and showing the dereliction of duty and I'm doing the job for them. And uh, I don't think they want to reveal the truth. Yeah, it seems like they are very selective on, and that's why conservative outlets like Town Hall exist and why we're doing this. Yes. So I can also communicate it to my column as well. Is there anything else you'd like to add about your efforts? And, and you had said that uh, you have inspired others, empowered others, I should say, to yes. replicate your efforts too, because you said you can't do this on your own. Yeah. And with any movement to succeed, you have to empower others to do it. You were, you were alluding to that earlier, right? Yeah, well, I want to be clear. 
If I wanted to, I could travel the country and I could go to galas and I could charge all this money and I could have people pat me on the back and tell me how great I am. I'm in the business of winning. I'm here for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to re-elect Donald Trump and to give him a house that is red and to expand our majority in the Senate. I want to win. So that's why when I'm traveling the country, I'm actually teaching voter registration trainings. So when a woman in Phoenix, Arizona, who I just went to and taught her says, Scott, I just registered two voters. That to me means everything because I'm not keeping all the secrets. I'm creating more Scott Presslers across the country. And, uh, and then when my buddy Justin in Pittsburgh says, Scott, we're doing another cleanup and we're coupling that cleanup with voter registration. That to me means the world because that means the fruits of my labor are actually sprouting and coming to fruition. But no, I'm wearing a very specific shirt today. If you haven't already seen, it says Pennsylvania for Trump. And I want everyone to hear me loud and clear. The reason why I'm focused on Pennsylvania, even though I'm a Virginian, is because if Donald Trump should win Pennsylvania, he wins. Game over. It's done. I'm going to be so bold as to make a prediction that Donald Trump is going to win Ohio and it's going to be a slam dunk. I'm going to be so bold as to say he's going to win Florida. And based on the math and based on the Electoral College, we win those 20 electoral points in PA. It's done. And the Democrats can't say anything about it. So I'm going to spend the entire month of October all 31 days traveling from coast to coast, from Philly to Pittsburgh to Lancaster to Erie to Bucks to Butler. I'm gonna go every single city as humanly possible to register voters, engage with them, and get them out to vote. That's very good. That's a very ambitious goal to have. And uh, it seems like your efforts are succeeding. What can yes. people do to support you if they're interested to support you? You can slide into my DMs on Twitter. <laughs> I always love saying that. And I'm very responsive. I will message even though I have so many followers. I take the time. I want you to know I care. And uh, just say, Scott, send me your voter registration guide. Scott, I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm happy to do an event with you. And um, you can go to my website, scottpressler.org. I haven't had a lot of time to go on there because I'm just so gosh darn busy, but Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Parlor at Scott Pressler. Wonderful. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with me, Scott. I oh, really thank appreciate you. sharing your story and I hope people uh, can learn more about your efforts and get involved. Thank you. Thank you so much, Town Hall.